Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, where we'll delve into an interesting linguistic phenomenon. We're going to decipher why the term pirahe hain, which translates to drinking, is often used to describe the act of smoking cigarettes. Now, you might be thinking, but cigarettes are solid, not liquid, right? Well, you'd be correct. However, the way we perceive and express certain actions can often blur the lines between literal and figurative language. This is what makes language such a fascinating subject. So, let's start by addressing the common question, why do we say pirahehein when we smoke? The answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. It all comes down to the way we perceive and describe certain actions. So, stick around as we delve into this linguistic riddle and unravel the mystery behind this interesting phrase. When we consume something, we often associate it with eating or drinking. But let's pause and think for a moment. Is consumption truly confined to just gulping down our favorite soda or munching on a delicious burger? Well, not really. Consumption extends beyond the realm of our taste buds. It also encompasses the act of inhaling substances, such as the smoke from a cigarette. Now, you might be wondering, how does inhaling smoke equate to consuming? Think about it this way. When you smoke a cigarette, you're drawing smoke into your lungs, just as you would pull a refreshing drink into your body. You're consuming the substance in the cigarette, taking it into your body and absorbing it into your system, much like when you drink a glass of water or a cup of coffee. So, when we say pirahe hain to describe smoking, we're essentially drawing a parallel between the act of smoking and the act of drinking. We're recognizing that in both instances, we're consuming something. Even though one involves a solid item and the other a liquid, the underlying process of consumption remains the same. But why do we use a term that's associated with drinking to describe smoking? Well, it's largely due to how our minds work. Our brains are great at simplifying complex ideas and creating associations. By using a term related to drinking, we're able to easily communicate the idea of smoking. It's a simple yet effective way to convey the concept of inhaling and absorbing a substance. So, when we say pi rahe hain, while lighting up a cigarette, we're not just using a random phrase. We're tapping into a deeper understanding of consumption and how our bodies interact with different substances. And this is where the term pi rahe hain comes into play. It's a linguistic representation of our perception of consumption, extending beyond just food and drink to include the act of smoking as well. Smoking involves inhaling smoke into our lungs, similar to how we drink liquids into our bodies. This may seem like a stretch, but bear with me. When you drink, you're taking a liquid from an external source and introducing it into your body. Similarly, when you smoke, you're inhaling smoke from a cigarette and bringing it into your lungs. So, while the substances and the physical actions are different, the underlying concept is the same. You are consuming something external. Now, let's think about the act of drinking. It's fluid, it's continuous, and it's often associated with relaxation or enjoyment. Sound familiar? That's because smoking can embody these same characteristics. When you light up a cigarette and take that first drag, it's not a rushed or abrupt action. It's smooth, it's steady, it's continuous, just like sipping on a drink. Moreover, consider the ambience associated with both smoking and drinking. They often occur in similar social settings, parties, gatherings, or perhaps a quiet evening alone. Both acts can serve as a form of stress relief, a momentary escape from the hustle and bustle of daily life. The parallels between the two are not limited to the physical act itself, but extend to the emotional and psychological realms as well. But here's the catch. Despite these similarities, it's crucial to remember that smoking and drinking are fundamentally different, especially in terms of their health implications. While moderate drinking can be a part of a healthy lifestyle, smoking is unequivocally harmful. It's a comparison of apples and oranges or more accurately, a comparison of a refreshing beverage and a harmful, addictive substance. So why do we use the term pi rahe hain when smoking? It's a product of our collective perception and interpretation of the act. We see the parallels, the shared characteristics, 
and we use a term that reflects that. It's not about the physicality of the act, but the essence of it. And that, my friends, is the beauty of language. It's flexible, it's subjective, and it's a reflection of our shared experiences and perceptions. This is why people use the term pirahe hain to describe it. Additionally, cultural and linguistic factors play a role in shaping our language. It's fascinating to examine how these elements intertwine to create the unique dialects and phrases we use in our daily lives. One such example is the term pirahehain, used to describe smoking. In our culture, smoking has been normalized over time, and it's common to see it integrated into social settings where drinking is also prevalent. These environments have a significant impact on the language we use. We often adapt our speech to match the context, and in this case, the act of smoking has been linguistically linked with drinking. This connection may seem unusual, but when you consider the shared social settings of these activities, it begins to make sense. Picture a social gathering where friends are chatting, some are sipping on drinks, and others are puffing on cigarettes. In such a setting, it's easy to see how the language used to describe these actions might begin to overlap. Language, after all, is more than just a tool for communication. It's a reflection of our society, our norms, and our shared experiences. So when we borrow terminology from one activity to describe another, it's not just a linguistic quirk. It's a testament to the fluidity of language and its ability to adapt to our evolving cultural norms. Moreover, the words we choose to use are influenced by our linguistic background. In many languages, including ours, there isn't a direct verb that translates to smoking. So, we borrow the verb associated with drinking, pie, to fill that gap. This linguistic borrowing is a testament to the versatility and adaptability of language, demonstrating how it evolves to suit our communicative needs. So the next time you hear someone say pirahe hain when referring to smoking, remember, it's not just a phrase. It's a linguistic phenomenon born out of cultural norms, social context, and the inherent flexibility of our language. Furthermore, the social context in which smoking occurs can influence the language used to describe it. Now, what do we mean by social context? In simple terms, social context refers to the immediate physical and social setting in which people live or in which something happens or develops. It includes the culture that individuals are born into as well as the culture they participate in throughout life. In the case of smoking, the social context could be a pub, a party, a get-together, or even a casual hangout with friends. In these social settings, it's not uncommon to find people drinking and smoking simultaneously. This overlapping occurrence of drinking and smoking in social environments can subtly influence how we talk about these actions. Let's dig a little deeper. When we're in a gathering where people are both drinking and smoking, we naturally want our actions to be relatable and comprehensible to others. We want to fit in to be part of the group. So when someone asks what we're doing, we might say, Pirahe hain, even if we're smoking, not drinking. Why? Well, the term Pirahe hain is universally understood in these settings to mean consumption, whether it's of a liquid or a solid. We use this term because it's familiar, it's relatable, and it's a way for us to fit in with the group. Let's take it a step further. When we're smoking in a social setting where drinking is the norm, we might feel a sense of camaraderie or shared experience with other smokers. This shared experience might lead us to use language that brings us closer to our peers, even if that language isn't technically accurate. So, in essence, the social context hugely influences the language we use to describe our actions. It's about being relatable, about fitting in, about sharing experiences. For example, if someone is smoking in a social gathering where others are drinking, the act of smoking may be verbally equated to drinking as a way to fit in or relate to others. Over time, certain phrases become ingrained in our language through habitual usage. This is particularly true for colloquialisms and idioms that we use in our everyday conversation. Now, when it comes to the term pirahe hain, 
used for smoking, it's no different. This phrase may not be literally accurate, but it has become a part of our linguistic fabric due to its frequent usage. The more we hear and use a phrase, the more it becomes a part of our speech and eventually it becomes a habit. Just like how we don't think twice before saying, break a leg to wish someone good luck. We don't bat an eyelid when someone uses pirahehein for smoking. It's all about familiarity and ease of expression. So, in essence, saying pirahehein when smoking may have become a common phrase due to its familiarity and ease of expression rather than its literal accuracy. In conclusion, the use of pirahehein to describe smoking cigarettes is a linguistic quirk. It's a testament to the power of language and how it can shape our perception of the world around us. It all starts with our tendency to view consumption in terms of eating or drinking, which leads us to use the term drinking to describe the act of inhaling smoke from a cigarette. This perception is further reinforced by the similarity between the physical act of drinking and the inhalation process involved in smoking. Both actions involve drawing a substance into our bodies, and this commonality has likely played a role in the adoption of the term pi rahe hain to describe smoking. Cultural and linguistic factors also contribute to this linguistic phenomenon. In many cultures, smoking has been normalized and integrated into social settings where drinking is also common. As a result, the language used to describe smoking borrows from the terminology associated with drinking. This overlap in language reflects the overlap in social contexts in which both activities occur. The social setting in which smoking takes place can also influence the language we use to describe it. If someone is smoking in a social gathering where others are drinking, they may verbally equate smoking to drinking as a way to fit in or relate to others. This further solidifies the association between the two actions in our language. Lastly, habitual phrasing plays a big part. Over time, certain phrases become ingrained in our language through repeated use. Saying pirahe hain when smoking may have become a common phrase due to its familiarity and ease of expression, rather than its literal accuracy. And that wraps up our explanation for today. I hope you found it insightful and that it shed some light on this interesting linguistic phenomenon. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.